I am unashamed. What about you? Welcome, everyone. We have Zach. What is this called? He's like virtual in our neighborhood. Yeah, Zoom. Zoomed in from yeah, North here. Carolina. Are you still in North Carolina? Yep. I hadn't left. Al's okay. gone. But I'm, I'm filling in for Al. And you still haven't got around to doing the honeydew of working on the wall, but that's okay. So glad you're here. <laughs> We're studying in a book of Acts, and a lot of people, you know, you got you got this this arrangement of things that happen that we believe as true history, and people will get up and they speak on it, and they get all different takes. And I just wanted to give y'all a, a what happened yesterday. Sometimes when you say something. There's a we got a, a communication problem. But I'm the type of person if you say something, I'm really listening to what you say, especially if you're at a place of establishment where you're taking my money. We have a sales going on. So I'm at the grocery store because my wife, she's she's in Austin, so I'm I'm doing all the shopping and the cooking and the cleaning. And so when I came up to the to the counter, because I'd had a moment with myself in one of these aisles over a problem that I had seen. But the person behind the register said, did you find everything okay? And I, I stopped. And I should have thought, she's probably said that to every person that's, that's been up here. And they say, oh, yeah, it was great. I said, well, I noticed something. I said, I've been looking for this certain brand of paper towel ever since the coronavirus came out. And every time I come up here, there's no paper towels at, at all or toilet tissue. And we're a year into this. Now, I didn't say it this passionately, but this was the gist of what I said. I said, and then today when I hit the aisle, I always look in the little spot where the brand that I love, you may tell you what it is. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but it's the greatest paper towel that I've ever come across. I've never thought about it. It's called Viva. Diva. Viva. 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 Yeah. So there's my, you know, plug. Good luck finding one, a roll. Well, I around the bin and I look and there it is. They got a rack of them. So I just started filling my buggy up. That's why no one else can find it now. Well, and then when I had it, you know, I had about three on there because they're big. I was buying the six rolls. There was a note that said, in courtesy of other customers, we're only allowing one per family unit. So I took it back. So I'm telling this person when she said, did you find everything? And I said, look, I told her the story. And I said, you know, we're a year into this. Can we not buy more? But when I said that, I could tell she she was offended. But I thought, you asked me, did I find anything? So I was, I was genuinely saying we need to buy some more paper towels. So, so they need to buy them so we can, the customer can buy them. Yeah. I'm less concerned about the paper towels, more concerned about the toilet paper. That's, well, that's the one what that I, I yeah, you, you buying toilet paper or paper towels? I'm, I'm in search of these paper towels, but toilet paper has been the same problem at the same store. But I'm like, I get it at first. There was a pandemic. We all rushed out. There was a rush. We're a year into this now. So are we using more paper towels and toilet tissue than we were? Well, that, well Phil, you, you they, guys. They're using the coronavirus, the powers that be, as a vehicle so that they can tell you what to do and what not to do. I'd like some paper towels. Free country, should be plenty of it around. A lot of trees, they're making it, it's rolling out of the factories. You would think that would be one of the easiest things to reproduce. It's well, in a roll. That's I'm my sure point. they have a machine. They use various of these things like you're talking about for you to submit to them, the governing authorities. You think that's what it is? I, I really believe it. What do you think, Zach? You get used to saying, well, I, I just wish I could have more of this. It's America. It's a free country. We ought to be able to get. No. 
you're out on that. You can't have but one. You got ten. You got it stacked up to the ceiling, but you can't have but one. That's that's the way it was. That's right. And you're look, it was a and you're fortress. hurting other people if you get two. Yeah. So instead then they of buying asked, more instead of buying more and solving the problem, they use it as leverage that you obey. We said you need one, and you say, "Well, how about two? And they say, "No, one's all you can get." That's it. We've got them here, but stacked up to the ceiling. Yeah. But you can't have but one of them. They're that's using right. that so you will get used to saying. You know, that's what they said. Well, here's that's what, what they said. That's here's what, what they got said. Me. When, and then asked, did you find everything you need? I thought, well, I found it, but I couldn't get but one They're of them. They're preparing your mind on how it's going to be with a socialist regime. They control your life, including how much paper towel or wiping material comes. They decide. <laughs> well, we've escalated. I mean, I was just... Bill's not worried. He's got, he's got, you got the homegrown toilet paper. You did a, you did an episode on that within the woods, right? Well, that's over true. cup leaves, oh, oak we, tree leaves. Yes. Why do we always Wide, get back to this? Little, little separations on them. It's the best. So I hated it. It's free and there's a lot of it. I hated for y'all to have to indulge me, but I just thought, I can tell this woman is offended because she's like, I mean, you're not. You didn't want to be courteous to other people. She basically asked you a question. Did you find everything's fine? And you said I, no. I said no. That's, that's, where, the that's where it went south. So then I thought, well, why ask? If you don't well, want to know. The problem is that you've got uh, people like Phil. Phil, you've been buying in bulk for years because you live in an hour from town. So y'all go in and buy in bulk. So how have y'all been surviving if you can't buy in bulk? One little caveat. Things? I haven't been. You said I, I buy in bulk. I don't buy anything like that. Anything. I don't go to stores and walk in well, and somebody give me buying this it for you. Jace is still buying toilet paper. I don't buy toilet paper ever. I've never bought it. I've never. I don't know where it comes from. Somebody it's buying. there. Somebody's buying it. Somebody buying it, but I'm not. I don't <laughs> care whether they buy it or not. I'll get the job done with leaves, free of charge. It must be nice. So, so what does it have to do with the Book of Acts, Jace? Well, I was transition. just saying that we were having a dialogue, and it just it just went off the rails, and and after all of that happened, nobody felt good about their position. I just tried to answer a question, and I just thought, you know, communication sometimes is is difficult. It, it's hard to have an agenda, or to have a purpose. Or have something written down on a piece of paper, which they just had one little thing written that we're supposed to abide to. But we were having yeah. trouble experiencing a loving conversation, and we were talking about paper towels. That's right. It, it just it, it hit was me. a way that they thought, say we run this your life, not you. Now we, did we I have do plenty wrong? of them? We have plenty of them. No, not really. She but asked. Was, we have plenty of it. It was stacked up back there. I wanted two, but I saw the note said you can't have but well, one. Well, I wanted three. Well, you wanted three. So you wanted three. No, you I can't submitted. have one. I submitted. You submit, that, and that's the way it worked. They're doing it in all facets of our life, so everybody gets used to what socialism will be like. They that may dictate be a the reach. policy. That may be a reach, but you may be right. I, I, do, I do find it fascinating that we're having a supply chain issue for paper towels and toilet tissue a year a year after this started because they're on a roll on a roll is that a no pun? Pun. you submit that's the roll they're on oh. and you walked out with your head hanging low because you got because you got slicked on the on the My how, much, how much paper towels i, you I was buy. more upset that she made a comment like well don't you want to be courteous to other people and i was like no i'm trying to Get somebody. Sometimes you got to state the obvious. I said, I th I think somebody in management should look into the supply chain issue. Yeah, because you didn't feel like you were being uncourteous. I didn't Correct? think I was. She asked a question. I gave her an answer. We need some more paper towels. Viva. So I, I see your point on the book of Acts. Then I, I, I was wondering how is he going to transition there? But yeah, because Acts two, which is where we're at, is about communication because you've got. This yeah. unfolding of the, of the kingdom of God that's happened here, you know, the keys are being handed over. It's it's kind of the, by the way, it's it's the worst idea. I would have never done it this way had I orchestrated the coming of the kingdom of God. 
occupied as a human, but, but God had a better idea. But you look at it like it is kind of weird that you've got all these people together and nobody speaks the same language. And that was who God was going to speak to in that moment. But they, none of them spoke the same language. So they had a major communication barrier. Is that, is that kind of where you were going with it, Jace? Well, I think there was a shadow there of the Tower of Babel. Because when he said, be yeah. fruitful and fill the earth, they said, no, we're going to stay right here and build a temple to the heavens. And so that's how we have, I believe, how we have the different languages. I believe God confused the language, which is, I think, an evidence of God. I mean, yeah. you always talk about what brand of, of, what do you say, people say, uh, seawater you know, being the origin of life, what brand of that, how did they maneuver the languages? Yeah. It, they, they're giving too much credence to salt water. <laughs> yeah. I believe God made salt water. But I, what I was going to say is my overall view of Acts may be different and than what, what a lot of people say. They, You know, this wasn't inspired, the actual title. I'm not sure where that came from. Somebody at some point when they read this letter, they put Acts. Now I think I was taught in the in the school that they said this is the Acts of the Apostle Apostles. And I disagree to a certain measure. Here's why. When you read the first verse, it says in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up into heaven. But I believe through the Holy Spirit when he read that, the the reference of what he began to do and now he's going to continue that. If that's how you start the book, because I believe getting the big picture of who God is, that Jesus is alive and well, sitting at the right, right hand of God and God through Jesus and his spirit that's fixed to be poured out in Acts 2 continues to do his work. So I actually believe that these are the acts of Jesus through people. Which That's what to, I believe. But to make it more simplified, the gospel is announced in the first three verses. After his suffering, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John recorded Luke wrote it down. He was there. After his suffering, Jesus died on a cross, and he had to be raised from the dead or he wouldn't be talking about anything. He spoke about the kingdom of God, which is at hand. He leaves, which he's at the right hand of the Father, to mediate for his people. Mm -hmm. Peter gets up, reinforces that. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose for knowledge. You, with the help of wicked men, put him to death. We're back to the suffering that Luke mentioned mm -hmm. in the first three verses, nailing him to the cross after his suffering. God raised him from the dead after he suffered, freeing them from the agony of death. It was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Yeah. Therefore, I'm going to tell you all a story. It will be impossible for death to keep its hold on you. Now, I turn one page. Oh, I, turn, I turn one page. Hang on, Phil. Take a break. I get to tell you about one of our sponsors today. Even though I'm not very good at sales, I'm going to give it a shot. This is Bowl and Branch. Do you know what they do? Sheets. Yeah, but somebody just, the Miss K just put those on our bed. What about it? We slept like babies. Okay. That's, look, what else do you really need? There you so, go. So let me tell you how to do this. If you want to experience the best sheets you've ever felt, that's quite the statement. Go to bowlandbranch.com. That's B-O-L-L and branch.com. You'll get 15% off your first set of sheets when you use the promo code Robertson at the checkout. That's bowlandbranch, B-O-L-L and branch.com, promo code Robertson. And enjoy some rest. So you read that. Right. I turn one page. You disown the Holy One. This is chapter 3. You disown the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a, a murderer be released to you. Remember, thieves on both sides, murderers. 
You kill the author of life. He's back on the suffering. But God raised him from the dead. That's what happened after he suffered. Right. And we're all witnesses of this. Look, that's three. Look, I turn a page. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed. You say they get on the gospel of the kingdom. Because by the time you get but to. Phil, that's my whole point. My yeah. point is. I, here's what I think happened. It all centers Zach, you're around a, the gospel of Jesus, yeah, the book of I, Acts. So I think that is God working in people through this same Jesus. I think the confusion happened when Jesus died and was buried and raised in that process. He said, it is finished. And so a lot of people say, oh, well, that that's finished. Well, his his work to save the human race. That's, that's right. Finished. But really, in him saying it is finished, it had just begun. Just begun. Because now God in Jesus moves to the right hand of God. Where what does He do up there? He represents us. Well, what do we do here? We represent Him. We represent Him, and that's what happened. That's why when you read the whole book. It's like when, when Zach just said that in Acts 2, it's like if you came up with an idea on how to establish the kingdom, th this, this wouldn't be what you would choose. But the whole book seems like that because it doesn't develop the characters and what they're doing like Peter and Philip. and You're just getting snippets. And the reason I think that's true, because it's really about Jesus and, and how that's being being shown to the world in each instance. After his suffering, Matthew recorded, he said, all authority. You just see what I just did. They're all looking at him. Y'all saw what I just did. That means I have all the authority. It's been given to me. I just conquered death. I removed the sins of the world in a three-day period. My death, burial, and resurrection. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, is what Jesus said, and you baptize them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teach them to obey everything I've commanded you, and I'll be with you to the end of the mm -hmm. age. So if you look at that, you say, there's your marching orders. They're preparing it when the 120 got together. It starts to unfold. The first ones they talked to, I just read it. The first yeah. thing Peter said out of his mouth, men of Israel, listen to this, Jesus of Nazareth. Because I believe that's God speaking through him. What were you going to say, Zach? Yeah, I was going to say you had mentioned the the Tower of Babel earlier, which is I, I never really thought about that, but but that was man making it about man attempting to climb to God. Exactly. And God confuses. So God confuses man when man tries to take credit and do it on his own, and and the Tower of Babel and then and confuses the language. And here you have uh, the God bringing unity when 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 the, the establishment of the kingdom by God unifying man. By, by unconfusing the language, by letting each person hear each other in their own native tongue. So because they were, I, yeah, I, I love what Phil. I knew Phil. Yeah, I knew Phil was going to go there about the centrality of the gospel, which is another way of saying what you're saying, which is the centrality of Jesus and all of these miracles and all this thing that's going on here in Acts two with this communication barrier that God's overcoming through uh, uh, the tongues of fire. All of that, all of that was pointing to a sermon that he was about to give the people, which was the fact that Jesus was who he said he was. He was buried and he was raised on the third day. And that's that's what that was the message that people heard that they were cut to the heart on and asked Jesus, what do we do? And well, course, right. you know, the, the, well, that's why I read. Yeah, that's why I told you that silly yeah. story about the grocery store, because there you can interpret things in different ways. There's all different ways, you know, religious groups. I think there's what, how many now? You said the number the other day. There's tens of thousands, and everybody has a different take on everything. And so that's why I believe with with this entire Bible, you, there's there's one actor here. It, it's Jesus, and if you look at it in that light, He is the image of the invisible God. That's why you can't flip a page without reading what they shared. So you're saying in, it's the acts of Jesus through the apostles. That's exactly right. Yep. Now, and here's why I think that's... All they're doing is hammering on who he is and what he did and here, what he's now doing and what he will do. Here's why I think that's important down to real life. Because I believe the biggest issue 
with people giving their lives to Jesus or living daily for Jesus is this getting past this idea that this happened 2,000 years ago, which is a long, long, long time ago, and that Jesus left and he's a million miles away. And here I am down on this earth, and I'm just not sure what to do because it's hard. And I'm like, and so we come up with things to try to help people. We say, well, what would Jesus do? I don't even like that question because it's like he's not even hearing my heart in that moment. I'm having to go back and figure out a long time ago what would he do. And, and I'm like, no, he's acting. He, he never stopped acting in the lives of people. That's why he is at, at the right yep. hand of God. So all of a sudden it hits people that, well, wait a minute. You're telling me all these guys went out and they, they wherever there were a, a group of people, they, they stood up and started speaking. They had people in their homes. They, you read Acts 2, what we're going to get to. They were sharing with each other. They were meeting together. They were breaking bread. They were going down the street. Well, they were having all these moments. Well, how come I couldn't do that today in my world? Yeah. How come I couldn't have this Jesus action? You do the. It, we live it out, Jace, all the time. We are an exact replica, and we represent the head of the body, which we are members of, and he mm -hmm. is our king because we are his kingdom. It yeah. came right here. We're empowered by God's spirit. We are very unique in this world. Right. So so to finish my thought, I like it when people say, what would Jesus do? As long as they acknowledge, well, what's he doing right now in your life? It's a better question. When somebody says, well, every time somebody asks me, asks me that question, I give them that question. Well, what's he doing right now in your life? It's usually an awkward moment because <laughs> I'm like, well, you asked. What would he do? Well, what, what is he doing? He's acting. He's he's alive. Well, that's why we're here. That's why they were the, that they were there in their time. And and further ask by what power is he doing it? I think Acts two is telling us he's doing it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And what I think where we get nervous in this, and at least I can speak for myself, I get nervous with that because it it, it because I have no control over outcomes and results at that point. And you think about where we're at here, and Peter's about to preach the gospel to a group of people who do not understand the language that he speaks. How is that possible? It's impossible for them to hear what he's saying and for this communication to go effectively unless there is a supernatural intervention that is beyond his control. And, and thankfully there was. The Holy Spirit was there to, to take what Peter said and make it known to people. And I think even as we live out our lives, Phil, you said it, we're living this out, but the way we're living it out is by the power of the Spirit. And mm -hmm. we're not manufacturing anything. We're just being obedient to what God's called right. us to, and we're letting God deal with the results. That's what's happening here in Acts He gave those apostles the power to start in Jerusalem, and then you go to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He gave them the power which was a great stroke of genius on his part, to bring all of those languages. The apostles could speak them all, Zach. They had no trouble. They didn't have to stop and study their language of the, where they were going uh, so they could communicate with them verbally. He just gave them the ability to speak well, in all of the world's, yeah. world's people. Well, let's just read it. Let's read it. I mean, in Acts 2. It's wild. He, it says when the oh, day of... Take, say that again. Let's take a quick break. Take a break for you, Dave. Go ahead. So we've been talking about big tech censorship over the last uh, several uh, weeks, and um, just the threat that that we have, you know, to to what's going on here. Um, first and foremost, we believe that that uh, God's in control, and ultimately, information is not going to be throttled. But it does ebb and flow, and so that's one of the reasons why we are working with Blaze TV uh, behind a paywall, where no matter what happens, you can get access to our stuff. Um, you go to blazetv.com slash Phil, 
And right now they got a special. Al, what's the uh, what's the special? It's uh, sixty nine bucks. Uh, normally it's ninety nine, so it's thirty dollars off. So it's, and this is per year, so it's not a lot of money. You're talking about you know per month. It's really small if you you know view it in that way. So and not only do you get access you know to this and other things and <clears throat> what Dad's doing, but you get you know Mark Levin and Glenn Beck and everybody that's on our network. So it really is a good deal. A lot of good people are on there. And, you know, I mean, I, I love it. I love going to watch different things that are there. Yeah, and at this point in time, this is more than a promotion for us. I mean, we really highly encourage you to go um, and subscribe to what we're doing to Blaze TV. Um, uh, and, and, again, it's $30 off, only $69. That's blazetv.com slash fill, and you'll get the code. You'll see the little box on the landing page there. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Now, there's a big debate whether that's the 120 or, or more, but we know at least 120 of them were there because they were all praying together in Acts chapter 1. But then it says, Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven. Now, you got to remember, in chapter 1, he had just said, when they, when Phil read that about you'll be my witnesses all through Judea, he had just said, I'm going to give you power. In verse 5, he said of chapter 1, John's baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. But notice that terminology. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. It's like going to be unleashed it's, you're, you're going to be immersed by it, which is a little different than, you know, when you tell someone, get up, be baptized, you're going in the water, but this here's coming to you. And so then you hear this sound, a violent wind, and then verse 3, it says, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire. I have a hard time picturing that in my head, but some kind of tongue of fire separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. I would say they are experiencing this baptism that Jesus said, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And began to speak in other tongues. Now, in my version, it has a little letter beside tongues. Does it, does it in yours? Your mind says in, Languages. Languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now, here's what's cool about this. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. What, what, a lot what, of different languages. Why does he start talking about people are here from every nation? A lot of languages. Yeah. When they heard this sound, so you got a violent wind, you've got tongues of fire, and you've got people speaking in languages that they haven't studied. Is that a correct assessment? Worldwide languages. When people heard that sound, which would be quite the racket, you know, blowtorch, fire, and... By the way, if you ever see that, take note of that. <laughs> <laughs> Something big going down here. <laughs> Real big. When they heard this, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because that's the way you would be. Here's my point. What? modern day if you see look like butane blowers coming out of somebody's head and yeah. fires their tongues are like fire if you ever see that take note of that and say i be with them i think there's a certain amount of bewilderment that would happen yeah because now here's here's what's cool because each one all these people that heard this sound heard them speaking in his own language what a feat so it wasn't which is more yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't possible was speaking in different language. Every they would speak in one language, but then everybody interprets it and hears it in their own language. Oh, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. I'm telling now you. Now look, now this I, is a, this I, is a happening. I brought up the Genesis 11, the Tower of Babel, because if you go back and read it, you'll find a verse that's very profound. God gave humans. Uh, a little bit of wisdom, a nugget of wisdom before he even revealed Jesus, before all this came along. He said, even though I told them, now I'm paraphrasing this, but I'll, I'll get to the quote, uh, to be fruitful, fill the earth, move. 
He said, if as one person, here's the quote, they speak the same language, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. That's in Genesis 11. So that's why he confused their language. But he gave you a, a, a clue into why humans can be so successful. If you get any group of humans together and they unify on any cause, whether they're with God or without, they become a powerful force, and God documents that in Genesis 11. It's a powerful Amen. thing for people to unify and come together. Yep. The Good reason, point. But the reason why... The reason why he shut it down in Genesis 11 was because the intention of what they were trying to accomplish, which was, it was humanism. The same thing we talked no about. Doubt. Last time no doubt. It was a direct we're, disobedient word and humanism, I think. We're going to do that. We're going to build a tower and we are going to reach God. And God's like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're, you're never going well, to. Well, the verse says, Zach, it says, we're going to build a temple and make a name for ourselves. And look, I want to say this. I believe churches not necessarily worldly groups of humanistic teachings. I believe churches do the same thing that that what happened in at the Tower of Babel. I believe church buildings are constructed and erected, and people who are in leadership say, we're going to make a name for ourselves. What do you think? Well, I, yeah, I think that we all struggle with that, even as humans. But what's interesting about what happened to them in Genesis 11, that was their fear, was was the idea they didn't want to be scattered, and they wanted to make a name for themselves. Yeah. And God comes down and shuts it down, and guess what happened to them? They didn't make a name for themselves, Right. and they were scattered. Well, I'm just saying that, you know, churches, like any other thing, turn into brands, and people say, oh, we need to do what this, this group is doing, and we— we need to do because they're really moving and shaking, and that's God. That's the brand. Now, whatever they're calling themselves is irrelevant. That's why when someone one time asked me about the name on the sign, because when people ask, well, what group are you with? I realize there's a lot of denominations or a lot of different groups, and I realize why they're asking that question. Because they want to put me in a box and say, oh, well, you believe this and you believe that. And so I usually say, well, I'm with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. You can take it plural or singular. Both work. But I'm not going to be tied down to a group. And then they say, what does the sign say? And I say, well, I would love for our sign to change every week with anything that points people to Jesus. Because really it's about him and not us is my point it's the exact opposite of genesis 11 what do you think zach no i agree i think that i think that uh, as we even look at where we're at culturally right now I, I kept asking myself like what like what's god up to in all this and um you know i think that even like the whole the last podcast we did on tech censorship and all that and and i mean like i said i mean our my business is tied up in it like i'm concerned about it but when i read what's going on here in acts 2 i think about genesis 11 I mean, I, I'm thinking if, if if God wants his message to be communicated, then guess what's going to happen? It's going to be communicated, and we're not going to be able to take credit for how it went down because it's always been a work of the Holy Spirit. So I see this vein in throughout history, which I do think churches have bought into this, that we think that somehow we are going to accomplish the work of the Spirit yeah. in our own power, and it's not going it's not to gonna work. Happen. So why don't, I, why don't we try this? Why don't we say, okay— Let's all get together and agree to do this. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians 2, down at the bottom about verse 17, he came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near, Jew and Gentile. For through him, we both, Jew and Gentile, have access to the Father by one spirit. Now, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens. So here's what we need to do on our signs. Week one, Jace, month one, we I put on our sign, fellow citizens with God's people. Put that on the sign because Love it. that's who we are. Next month, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone, citizens. So we said, citizens we are of God. In him, the whole building. Well, in month two, you'll put, who are you? I'm like, I'm a member of the building of God. 
Love it. One individual. Uh, <clears throat> we're joined together. And we rise to become a holy temple. Who are you? I'm like, I'm a member. I'm part of the temple of God. They're like, what? I said, the temple of God, the building of God. And we have fellow citizens just like myself. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Mm -hmm. Just put on there where God dwells. Mm -hmm. And change, change the sign about once a month. That mm -hmm. way, when they say, oh, you are this or that, the other, you say, oh, way, way beyond that. Yeah. So when people ask me, how come there's so many different denominations? I say, well, there's a lot of different ways to call yourself a son of God, a disciple of Jesus, and an indweller. We're of called the, Holy the church. Spirit. The church meets here sometimes. <laughs> yeah, Most of the time. I like that. Most of the, the time, church Monday through sa Saturday, the church still meets. But but doesn't they be here, sometimes? You need to say occasionally. Yep, yeah, meets here occasionally. Then change that sign for the next week. Let's take a break. All right. Well, look. Let me finish reading this. So so then, verse seven of chapter two. Utterly amazed, they asked, "Well, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? I mean, they knew who, where they were from." Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? And he starts listening, listing all the different groups of people with different languages. Yep. And by the way, it's more than 12. Yeah. So actually the miracle was that, that people, the sound was coming out and they were hearing the interpretation in, in, you, you had a single issue with a single message because after they say, <clears throat> which I thought it was funny, in verse 13, it says, some, however, made fun of them saying they've had too much wine. So whatever that sound was, and, and, and I guess the spirit at which they were experiencing this powerful Holy Spirit presence, they were coming across like they were drunk. If you heard German... French, uh, Latino, Mexico, the Mexico, uh, the Spanish, Spanish. Spanish <laughs> uh, uh, you were you, getting there. And look, and all of those were coming together. Czechoslovakian, but, but, and but everybody understood what what was being Portuguese. said. That was a big deal. Yeah. Well, then in that moment, Peter stands up and addressed the crowd. So. I have a couple questions. What do you, what do y'all think? Number one, when people read this and they hear about this tongues of fire and the blowing wind, that seems scary to people. And so, and I've been to churches where it seemed a little frightening, just the level of uh, enthusiasm, I guess. So, what is your take on that, Zach? What would you say about that here? Why why would God choose, in your opinion? to have such an, an unleashing moment? Well, I think it's the same, the answer to the question they asked, like, how, how is this possible? How is it possible? I think the reason why he chose this route is the same reason why he chose to, to deliver um, the Egyptians through somebody who had a speech impediment, Moses. He chose, um, it's the same reason why God chose a, a little boy, shepherd boy, to defeat a, a, a giant. It's the same reason why he chose... Um, Joseph, a slave, to, to be the ruler of Egypt. And all you look back at who, how God chooses, man, it's always like God cho he chooses the lowly things of the world to despise the things that are. He chose a carpenter to bring salvation to the world. He came through a little baby. And I think the reason why is the answer to that verse 7, because it is all about God. Yeah. God is the one who is accomplishing salvation. God is the one who is doing this. And I think that he did not want man to go in there and try to take credit yeah. for it. So he comes in the most bizarre way to where he gets up to where that point you mentioned, uh, where Peter stands before the people. He's, he's building a case here. Yeah. So the, the Spirit's power comes to testify to what Peter is about to say. Yeah. But look, I remember just in my own life, because I've shared this many times, but when what Zach just said is what you realize is this is God acting. That's why it should be the acts of God. And then in real small letters, he used people. 
because here I was, you know, I was really shy as a kid for whatever reason, you know, maybe just because of, you know, Phil being away from the Lord and living in that environment. Who who knows? It may just have been my personality, but I just didn't say a whole lot. And even when I came to Jesus, I mean, at 14, I'm like, Jesus is Lord. I basically played defense for two years, two years of defense in high school, which was commendable. I was staying out of trouble for the most part. But God wasn't acting. I, I didn't get this concept here. I, at that point in my life, I thought this was, oh, tell me what I need to do. Okay, I believe. I took care of that and now survive. I, I'm mm -hmm. it, God's still a million miles away, and I just stumbled up on this, and it was like I was trying to find the clues of, uh, you know, Temple of Doom, Raiders of the Lost Ark here. And, oh, I figured it out. What I missed is that God is living and active. The power of the Holy Spirit, he can use me. By the way, from that moment 2,000 years ago, right at it, Zach, uh, I have this book. It's, it's an English Bible because I speak English. That's my tongue, the English tongue. How many various languages, this is still the number one seller in the world, and it's been that way for a long time. How many, how many languages has, have the word of God, including the book of Acts, how many languages has that been translated into since they all took off with the ability to speak in any language? Well, now we have it in written form what percentage of the languages would you say the Bible's been translated in? Just off the top of your head. I don't I really don't know. I don't, well, I don't know the exact number, but I will tell you this that, There's that a thing called by 2030. Google. Well, yeah, I could Google it. Uh, by 2030, I know Illuminations is working on Bible translations. They're gonna have it translated in every language by 2030. So we're we're nearing the point where it's gonna be translated into almost every language in the world. That's Do pretty interesting. Maybe when that day comes, Do we know that now? might be the end of it. <laughs> How many languages in the world? I'm not a, I'm not a very fast type. I hope so, Bill. What, give me a guess before I, before I do it. How many languages are there? Give me a guess. It's coming up. Give me a guess. I think that. there's 6,000 languages. You just look. 6,000 languages. You just so look. I promise I didn't. Six six thousand languages. No, no, that wasn't right, but it was close. Yeah, six thousand five hundred. Of course, as of December twentieth. You didn't let me finish. All right, well, go ahead. And this even makes the event that happened in the Book of Acts. <laughs> well, you're cutting out, Zach. That's why I didn't let you finish. Go Your ahead. language is being cut out right now. Yeah, computers cutting you out, dude. So go ahead, finish. No, I was kidding. I was going to say, oh. I said 6,000. No, it was 6,500. If this is right, but this is, is this what you call the black box? What I'm so, saying is it makes it even more powerful to know that this has been literally verse by verse translated into most of those 6,000 languages. And these people that were well, speaking that day pretty well had that capability. They, they pretty well had it uh, intimated that this is going yeah. worldwide. You want a, uh, not code In your language. That's a, that's a picture. What, what's a, you know, the mute, you, you want a playlist moment. If you had the, uh, the power to instantaneously make human, a, a human, enable him, not make him, in, enable him, to speak all known languages? That's my point. In other words, what are the odds that one book would be translated into right at it 6,000 or so languages and it be done in a relatively speaking short a, time? So you're telling me there's a chance? I'm just saying. How many one, books have ever done that, uh, Zach? One in... You're telling me there's a chance because yeah. it seemed to pull it off. Here's what I want to say before we run out of time. If you, if you believe what we're 
presenting to you in that God is acting not only then through these men in history, but now through us today. No doubt about it. He's acting. He's given us the ability through Jesus and the power of his spirit to represent him on planet Earth. That's what we're doing. If, If... it, one thing you can do to help remind you of that as we go through the book of Acts is remember, it wasn't like he was a million miles away. You remember the episode with Paul right after Stephen? Well, he's actually speaking. There's red letters in, what is that, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. And he's like, why? You know, when he said, who are you, Lord? And, and there's several little references in the book of Acts that people don't notice. You remember the story of Lydia that we'll get to at some point? And it said the Lord had opened her heart. To respond to the message. To respond. Well, I, wait a minute. I thought the Lord was at the right hand of God. Mm-hmm. And that's what I keep going back to. If you get in your head that this book is the act of Jesus, I mean, you know, you can say act of God through men, however you want to phrase that. When you try to distance it and say, yeah, this is the acts of the apostles, I think you've missed it right off the bat. You you missed it a country mile. And so you do it in the same thing in your life when you go out there and you say, well, I need to do something for God. No, you missed it already. God wants to do something through you. <laughs> you know? That, that's, that's the difference. So acknowledging that and realizing that, oh, he didn't save me. He didn't say it's finished so I could just sit on my bum and give some money. That's not what this is about and try to stay out of trouble because guess what? You're not going to be able to do it. So that's what's awesome about God is that even though we do get into trouble and we do make mistakes and we do sin after, he's at the right hand of God taking care of that for us so we can go out here and be used by him in these acts of love and boldness. Yeah, and and I think it's key to remember that while the Son of God, Jesus, is mediating for us, the Spirit is living in us and applying that salvation to us, that, that sanctification to us. So well, right. think about the, like... The, the only fish- difference, Zach, between... Right now, 2,000 years later from when the book of Acts was written and the kingdom came, John the Baptist, Jesus, and the disciples took out a cross there and they said over and over and over, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Fast forward 2,000 years, three members of that kingdom are simply saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is here. Mm-hmm. Not near. It's here, and you're li- talk, listening to three members of it. The redneck types got a few whiskers. You say, "Kingdom <laughs> members of the kingdom of God, huh? Who's the king? Jesus. Yeah. yeah. He removed my sin. Yeah. He's gonna raise me from the dead. Yeah. That's the book of Acts. That's yeah. the whole Bible. So there you go. So I started off telling you this silly story, but I with. I withheld the ending on purpose because if you just left it there, it would be silly. But when I thought, I think I've upset this person. She works here. They told her to ask people if they found, you know, if if people found everything in the grocery store. But I could tell she wasn't used to someone saying, you know, as a matter of fact, no. (laughs) So they need to go to phase two. However, I realized that and I thought, I don't want to make God look bad here. You know, like I'm griping about we don't have any paper towels around here. I mean, she asked, so I just thought, hey, get some more paper towels. You went deeper than I ever would. Yeah, I did. I shouldn't have done it. And so I said, you know what? Because I could tell it was getting awkward. I said, I'll be glad when there'll come a day where we won't have to worry about paper towels. And I said, everybody is upset about the pandemic pandemic and it's okay to be concerned i said but you know all the trouble that it's faced i said but i'm i'm looking toward heaven well evidently she was a believer because she affirmed that so you know you're right there's way bigger things that's way bigger things than paper towels well that ended well it ended well why did it take you so long to say it was a good ending i just thought i would create some drama because i wanted to show the point of acts (laughs) 
And I wanted to say that I believe God was acting in that moment. He took my weakness for, they asked me a simple question. I gave them a simple answer. Chaos ensued. Feelings were getting hurt. And then I remembered the big picture and used that, even in my flawful moment, to say, you know what? And I, I love having Jesus conversations in places that are not religious. Grocery stores, auto shops. <laughs> the, these are, I just think that's where the God magic happens. The Spirit is poured out in those moments, and people think, oh, is there really a God? Is there, are there really people who believe in this stuff? And you have these conversations about life, and I believe that's when God is acting. One way of looking at it, you said, does God provide all things? I said, he does, including wiping materials. <laughs> Thank you for that. Just man. find you a big oak. You'll be all right. <laughs> See you all next time. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube. And be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.